Hi everyone, welcome back to Pop Paul's Workshop. I hope that you guys are down in the shop working and helping out Santa with all the different toys that need to be made. Now one of the things that I want to do this year is make some toys for the grandkids. And I thought about designing and doing all kind of crazy things and I started doing some research. Guess what I found? I found a toymakingplans.com that has all the answers right there. And I want to be able to show that to you today and make a project from one of their plans. In my research, I found ToyMakingPlans.com. I reached out to these folks and they are absolutely fantastic. I want to take just a moment and show you the website. And the first thing, you have 350 different toy plans. And as you scroll through this, you see all types and sizes of different models that you can build. And this is just amazing. Some of these toys you're able to sit on, others you can pull. It's just a wide variety of different types of toys that they have designed. One of the things that you can do, they have this all broken down. So if you want to look at boats and ships, just click on it and now you have a ton of different plans to be able to choose from. And each one of these comes with a complete set of plans. Now this is 1 through 12, and this goes up to 22 different plans. Now, one of the things that they've done is recently started with the CNC plans. So here you have a list of the available CNC plans that you can do. So if you don't want to use the scroll saw or bandsaw, well, by golly, you can use a CNC machine. So you're going to get the complete SVG file, and in addition to that, you do have the digital PDF file that you're going to be able to have all of the instructions to be able to put these uh, toys together. It's just absolutely fantastic. And with the SVG file, not only can you use easel, v-carve, carbon create, but you can also use the laser and be able to cut these out. But today what I'm going to do is choose Freddy Frog Buddy and we're going to download this and I'm going to show you exactly how to set this up. And of course, when you click on that, you can see the price is zero and you're able to download this very easily right to your computer. When you get this file, this is the PDF and this goes into a lot of detail and shows you exactly what you can do with Freddy Frog, buddy. I'm going to scroll through this so you can see exactly what you're receiving from the different plans that you get. They even go into detail as to how to be able to paint it. For an example, the color of the wood uh, toy can be built with plywood, hardwood, softwoods, even MDF. They're using a spray finish and they're using the Krylon or the Rust-Oleum clear gloss. They even tell you how to sand it up to the 220 grit paper and then the final coats you can actually sand up to the 400. So it's very, very detailed to be able to get these kinds of results. They give you a, the actual size, a front view, the side view, a top view of what the uh, toy is going to look like. And then they show you examples of the different colors. And this is what the plans will look like when you receive them. And then they number these so that you can see exactly how many parts that you need, the size of the parts, so it's a complete parts list for the toy. Then they have the exploded view that shows you how this gets assembled. And then they give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to be able to assemble this. So I absolutely love the detail that they go into to be able to make sure that you're going to have success with this toy. Now this is for the scroll saw and you can see exactly what you need to be able to cut out. And then if you're going to download this for the CNC machine, there is a separate file that's an SVG file. And when you load this, this is exactly how it's going to come into your software. 
Now, one of the things that they do also is that they use the Carbon Create software to be able to cut out all of their different toys. So what I decided to do, rather than show you the Carbon Create, I'm gonna show you two different methods to be able to set up your files. One is using the Easel software, and you can use the free version, the Easel Basic, to do this without any problem. And the other thing that I'm going to do is show you how to set it up in the vCarve, which is through the Vetrix software. Now, you can use the vCarve desktop, or in my case, I'm going to be using the vCar Pro to be able to set up the tool paths to be able to cut this out. So the first thing I want to do is how to set this up in the Easel software. So I'm going to download the SVG file into my computer and then open it up in Easel. From there, I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like when you first bring it in. And then we're going to set it up and prepare it to be able to carve. And then in the next section, we're going to do the exact same thing, only this time, I'm going to take that SVG file that I loaded into the computer and we're going to bring it into the vCar Pro. And from there, we'll set up the tool paths to be able to carve that one out. Now then, as a surprise bonus, you can also download this file into Lightburn and be able to cut out the parts with the different toys using the Lightburn software and the laser. I have a blank screen opened up now in the Easel software. So I'm going to come right over here to this icon where it says import. And we're going to be importing an SVG file. And this is my Freddy Frog right here that we're going to be loading into the computer. And when it comes in, this is what it looks like. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So this is what the file will look like. Now, the interesting thing about it is, in Easel, you're not going to be able to carve it this way. But the first thing I want to do is get rid of this print up here. We're not going to need that. But it does say, refer to page 16 in the PDF plans for the index of the different parts. So that way, it's going to give you a detailed explanation of all the different part sizes and the dimensions of these different holes and the decorations that you have in this area. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and cut this part right here. And the same thing down here at the bottom. Yes, this is a copyrighted file. Copyrighted 2022. The uh, toymakingplans.com So these plans and the patterns are copyrighted and cannot be distributed or shared for free or for any other reason. So please remember the copyright uh, rules right down here at the bottom. But for now, we've read it, we understand it, and I'm going to cut this out. The next thing that I want to do is actually get this to fit into a smaller area. Now this will cut out in a smaller area. I don't need to have this much space around it. So I can take this piece for an example right here and just slide it down and put it right down there in the corner. So I can take each of these pieces and move them any way that I want and get them over here. Now one of the things that I will show you is this has the tabs. These yellow little buttons right here are the tabs and you can see them over on the preview screen right there that's the tab that's not going to cut out. And that's going to hold the piece in place when you cut it. Now, one of the things that I like to be able to do is use the glue and the tape method when I cut out the different projects. And that's what I'm going to do. So right up front, I'm going to select everything, come over to the cut menu, and where it says use tabs, I'm going to take that off. And then the next thing that I want to show you, and I'll just pick this one for an example. Now with this piece, I want to show you up close. This is showing this blue line right here. That's the actual path. This black line is actually the tool path. So this is set up to be able to cut on the tool path. So let's verify that. Let's come right up here and you can see when I click on these and open them up, it shows cut the sh on shape path. Well, I don't want to do that. 
because even with an eighth inch bit, these parts are gonna come out small. So the first thing we need to do is go through and change all of this and put it where it cuts on the outside. And now if you look real close, you're gonna see that blue line right in here and that bit is gonna cut on the outside. Now the same thing is true with this. You can see this is being cut on the path itself and we don't want that. Now this hole uh, is a 5 16 inch hole and we need to change that, not the shape of the hole, but how it's cutting. So I'm gonna highlight this again. We're gonna open up this window and I want this to cut on the inside. And now that's gonna give me the exact the hole size that I need. And if we come over here and look, you're gonna see this is 0.313 or the 5 16ths of an inch. So that is something we're gonna to need to do with all of the different parts. Now the next thing, let's zoom in again. We're gonna look at this part. Now these do not get cut all the way through. And this eye does not get cut all the way through. It needs to be cut down to 0.1 of an inch because this is really more of a decorative item. Click on this and the first thing, I don't want to change this so it's not cutting on the path. So by holding down the shift key, I can literally go through and select each one of these. And I wanna make sure that I get them all. Just like that. And then we're gonna set the cut depth to 0.1 of an inch. So I can slide this up just like this, or I can highlight this box, put in 0.1, and that way that is done. And then the next thing, Let's get these cut where they are cut on the inside. So there we go. Now they're cut on the inside. Now this one you see, let's take this off and let's do a detailed view. Now we're not gonna see that because it's not on that project. So let's slide this down a little bit. You can see this right there, kind of looks like a pupil. Well, that's not what you want. So we're gonna make a change. Instead of just cutting on the inside, we're gonna come right back up here to the cut menu again. And this time we're gonna put this as a pocket and now it'll cut all the way out. And that's what we want it to look like right there. So as you go through this step by step, you're gonna end up with something that looks like this. And I have this work piece set up now with all of the different parts fit in onto my piece of wood that's gonna be eight inches on the Y axis and 12 inches on the uh, X axis. And that fits in there very nicely. And of course, if we zoom in, you're gonna see that the tabs are still on this one so let's scroll in real close. Now, if you look at this, you can see that little blue line right there. So everything is cutting on the outside and this is cutting on the inside. The lighter color is showing the depth and this is all being cut at the point one. So the only thing that's left to do on this one, I'm gonna zoom back out, is highlight the entire project and we're going to eliminate the tabs. So I'm gonna turn those off. Now all the tabs are gone and you can go through and check out everything and make sure that it's 100% accurate before you carve it, but you are now ready to take this to the machine and be able to carve it. And to be able to look over here on the preview screen, you can see exactly how that is going to carve, and that looks real good. These holes right here are a quarter inch. These are five sixteenths of an inch, and this is all shown in detail on the uh, PDF uh, plans that you can look at. Now, these pockets are all set up to be cut down 0.1 of an inch. So this is actually ready to go. Now this is showing as a 
half inch piece of material and I have a half inch piece of MDF that I'm gonna to use to be able to cut this out. Now I'm using the eighth inch bit. And the instructions is gonna show that you can use a quarter inch bit. And if you use a quarter inch bit, I can come down, where's my quarter inch? There it is. And you can see it'll still cut out just fine. Now in this case, that quarter inch hole didn't show with the quarter inch bit. So this actually indicating that the hole is just a little bit too small for that to fit into. So I'm gonna change this back to the eighth inch bit. And let's see right here. And you can see the holes there again. Now, if you wanna use another feature that can be found in easel for these holes, for an example, I'm gonna take this hole right here and I have it highlighted. We're gonna come over here to the app menu, scroll down, and I can convert this over right here to the um, drill function. And this replaces the selected hole with a drill point placed at the center. And we can do this. Just click on, replace the existing, and import that in, and there's my center point. And you can see that right there. So let's see what happens now when I change this back over to a quarter inch bit. And now you see that hole is gonna drill through. So that's one more feature that you can use for these four holes for the wheels to be able to do it if you want to use a quarter inch bit and everything else is going to carve just fine. And of course, the little pocket decorative feature right here is not gonna carve. So let's fix that. The only thing that you really need to do is just come in and select a hole. I'm gonna take one of them and make it just a little bit larger. So I'm gonna use this one as an example. I'm gonna open up this tab and I'm gonna lock this so I change this to the entire circle and I'll put in 0.259. You can even put in 0.26 if you wish. It's just a little bit larger and now let's test it out. And you can see now it shows up. And just by changing the diameter of this pocket ever so slightly, it now will be able to work. It will be able to cut with that quarter inch end mill. So this is something that you may need to check as you go through this project. So if I want to put this back to the way it was, I can just put in 0.25 and hit my enter. And that is taken care of. That hole disappears. I like using the eighth inch bit. So I can highlight that right there. And this is an option, of course, for you right here to be able to use to have that drilled all the way through. Great features that can be found in Easel. And this is all can be done with the Easel Basic, which is the free version of Easel. I want to take just a moment now and open up Lightburn and import this same exact file into the Lightburn software and show you just how easy it is to be able to set it up and engrave on the uh, project using the Lightburn software. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Come over here to the CNC Frog Buddy and open this file. And there's the file right there, all ready for you to be able to engrave. So let me go ahead and do the same thing as we did before. Now this is all grouped together. So I'm going to come up here and ungroup this. So now, I'll be able to select yep, each individual one. So let's just select this. We'll cut it. We'll come down here, cut all of this. Okay, so let's ungroup this whole entire item. There we go. And let's zoom in. We'll ungroup. There we go. Now with that ungrouped, I can actually come in here and highlight, uh, let's see here, we'll highlight all of these. And with all those highlighted, I can change this down to a different layer. We can put this on a fill layer, and that way when this engraves, it's gonna fill this in solid. This portion will still cut out. Now the other thing, of course, we can highlight the entire item and slide this around and put it anywhere that we want on our board. 
So just like that, we can move it up here and put it in any position. And from there, it's just like any other file. Just set the uh, speeds and the power setting to be able to do the different um, cuts and engraving, and you're ready to go. So light burn is certainly an option for you also. At this point, I'm opening up the VCAR Pro, and we're going to create a new file. Now, the first thing, single-sided, yes. And this is going to be the 12, and on the y-axis, we need the 8 inches, because I know that that will fit. And this is a half inch thick. We'll stay in inches. We'll use the bottom left-hand corner for my Z position, and that's going to be on the material surface. So that will all be just fine. We'll hit the OK. And then from there, it's time to bring in the file. I'll come right up here to this icon. We'll click on that, and that'll open up my file folder. And there's my Freddy Frog right here. And I'll just hit OK. And now that you see it, we'll zoom out. You can see this is the entire file. We'll click off of it so you can see it a little bit easier. And now we can start doing the same exact thing. We need to modify this. Now these are individual, so I can actually come over here, highlight all of this, and cut it. I'm going to come down here, highlight this, and cut this. And then it's time to group all of this together so that it all will fit. So once I do that, then I can go over and set up the tool paths. And you can see when I move this, I left this behind. All I need to do is just back this up. There we go. We caught this. So let's highlight everything this time. And we'll get the whole entire object out of the way. And now that all will cut out just fine. And that's not the only way. I mean, if I wanted to take a wheel and put it up here, or take this part for an example, let's see if I can highlight this right here. And if I put this up this way, would that fit in there? And if I want to turn off the snaps, I can turn off the snap and actually move this a little bit easier. And I can rotate this down so that that fits right in there. And that's another way to be able to do it and fit it into this piece of wood. And then that gives me more room to be able to play with the wheels and get these wheels where I want them. Just like that. Oop, that won't catch everything. But that will. And then I can slide that up into here. There's all kind of different ways that we can do that. And from now, We'll come right up here to this icon right here. We'll go over to the tool paths and we can set this up to be able to carve this out. Now, the first thing, of course, we're going to want to have all of these as a pocket cutting down 0.1 of an inch. So I can just, let's see here. If I highlight all of these, Everything that was in compass gets highlighted, so that is taken care of. And I can hold down the shift key and do the same thing again with this group right here. Now then, that takes care of everything that I need to be able to have as a pocket. So we'll come over here to the pocket. We're going to have a start depth of zero. We're going to go down 0.1 of an inch. And... The bit that I'm going to be using is not the V bit. We need to remove that, one, and I need to select another bit. And I think I'm going to go ahead and use the eighth inch uh, bit for this. These speeds are fine. We're going to go slow. I'm not in a real rush to be able to do this project. So that takes care of the end mill. Two passes. What the heck? We'll leave it at two passes. Don't need to ramp, don't need anything else. So let's just go ahead and calculate this. And you can see how that pocket will be 
fit right in there. Now let's go back to the 2D version and I need to have all of the outside. I'm gonna hold down the shift. We're gonna select all of these parts Just like that. So all of these parts now are highlighted. I need to do this on the uh, profile. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to start with the zero cut depth. In this case, though, we're going to cut down to 0.5 of an inch. And we're going to use our uh, eighth inch end mill to be able to cut this out. We do want this to be cut on the outside. That way it cuts out here and gives the full size of the uh, object. And let's see here, we can come on down. I don't need, oh, let's add ramps. I like having the ramps in there. We'll leave that just like that. And then we'll have the profile and this is gonna be the um, outside And this will be with an eighth inch bit. And we can calculate that. And now we can see all of this done. Now, one more time, we need to get all of these holes drilled. And I can use the drill function or I can use, as I did before, just the eighth inch bit to be able to create the hole all the way through. But this time, I'm going to select each one of these. And again, I'm holding down the shift key, just like this. And we're gonna highlight this one, this one, and we'll get these four. Okay, I have all of these highlighted now, and we're gonna come back up here to the top. And the cutting depth is going to be the zero. That's the start point. And we're going to cut all the way through. Now this is going to be done with the eighth inch end mill bit. And the reason I'm doing this with a one bit is I'm going to be able to cut all of this literally in one step. I'm not going to need to have multiple bit changes to be able to cut this out. So it makes it very, very simple. We're gonna cut this now on the inside. So that'll go on the inside of each of these holes. Uh, let's see here, we'll scroll on down. Do I need tabs? No, I do not need the tabs. Uh, add ramps. Really don't need, just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and put the ramps in there. So that way it'll start each pass slow and not just plunge that bit down into the next level. And that will work out real well. Now, how many passes? Don't need 10 passes. Let's cut this down a little bit. Let's cut this down to uh, five passes. There we go. So that's point 0.1. I don't think I want to do that. Let's just make it seven passes to be able to show you how we can change this. And so that will be good. So we'll have seven passes instead of the 10. Doesn't really matter because this could be able to do it very easily. We have the ramps. Okay, and then this is going to be the um, inside cut out and that's again going to be the eighth inch bit and we'll calculate it so now you can see all of the different holes that's being cut out so let's reset everything and preview uh, the tool paths and you can see how every single thing gets cut out perfect that's exactly what we want the first thing to pocket, that's going to get cut out. So let's do this. Let's reset everything. 
that's going to be the first thing that cuts out. Then I want to take and move this one up. I want this next one to be the one that cuts out all the inside holes. And then the last one is going to be cutting out the outside, just like this. And again, we're going to have the tape and the glue holding this project down. So that will be perfect. So we'll close this. And at this point, all I need to be able to do is save my toolpath, create the G-code, and we're ready to be able to carve it out. So I'll click this icon right there, and you can see I have the pocket, the inside, and the outside. All of them are selected, and that way what will happen, I don't need to have a bit. It'll move from cutting out each one of these and when it's finished, the project will be totally cut out. So I will save this now. Now to cut out Freddy Frog Buddy today, I have a piece of just scrap MDF that I'm gonna use. And I have plenty of room right in this area to be able to cut out this frog. I'm gonna take this over to the table saw. I'm gonna get it cut and we'll put this on the Fox Alien Vasco to be able to cut out today. Now, the only thing I really need to do is just make this one cut. And I made it 13 inches just to have a little bit of extra room. Wasn't really necessary, but that's what I decided to do. I've got this scrap piece of wood now cut out. I'm going to use the bottom left-hand corner as my XY0. This is actually oversized. This is about 13 inches, and I didn't even measure the height. But it's going to give me plenty of room to be able to cut out Freddy Frog Buddy. Let's get this set up on the Fox Alien Basco, and we're gonna cut this out. The tool pads are all saved in the computer as well as the design itself. That way, should I ever need to go back and make any adjustments or anything, I can easily do that. Now, one of the things that I do is I save this file in its own file folder. That way, whenever I wanna come back and be able to carve it, all I have to do is just pull up that folder and all the files are right there. Now, I save this on a thumb drive so that I can take it with me anywhere that I want to go and be able to plug it in and ready to carve. Now we're headed over to the Fox A and Vasco machine. I'm going to put the project board onto the machine, load the G-code file, and I'm using the open build software to be able to control the machine today. So this is going to fit really nice right in here without any problem whatsoever to be able to cut this out. Over here on the computer, I'm going to close out the V-carve. I don't need that anymore. Everything's been saved. I'm going to open up the open build software and we'll get that up and running. Now to be able to hold this down, I'm using the Starbond medium glue to be able to secure it and to be able to get it where it will adhere to the board almost instantly. I'm using the Starbond accelerator. Now, I've shown this many times because I really like this method on being able to secure the project board. But I'm just going to get this out of the way at the moment. And I've got a roll of blue tape. Now I'm going to put quite a bit down today because that project is actually very full in that area. And there's going to be a lot of pieces that will want to move around. So this is not to hold the board down, it's to hold the individual pieces down from being able to move as they get cut out. And I think that'll be plenty right there to be able to hold all the different parts. And I'll flip this over and we'll do the same thing. I'll use this as a guide to be able to put my tape down. One piece will go there. The next piece goes real close to being right on top of that. And then the next piece will go right there. Now, if I didn't have so many individual parts to cut out, really two pieces of tape would have been fine. And that last part is going to be over there. 
on this end. So that should work just fine. So when I flip that over, that'll get dropped down right there. Well, let's get the glue. Let's get the glue onto the surface now. And like I said, it doesn't doesn't take a lot of glue. And that should be plenty of glue to be able to hold it. And then we take the accelerator, just spray that on the tape. And then put it right down into its new position, just like that. Give this just a minute and it will be secure. As soon as I move all the glue and the tools out of the way, this is nice and solid and it's not going anywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and home the machine, move it over to the XY zero position and we'll be ready to cut this out. Now, I just updated the Open Build controller software and they have a new setting right here that gives you a dark mode. So I can select it as it is now and you see the dark mode. I can select this again and okay, it brings it back to the white mode. So I don't know what you're gonna be able to see easier in the camera, but for right now, I'm gonna stay with the white mode and uh, give that a try. From here, I want to home the machine. And of course, this is gonna move all the way down to this position. And once the homing cycle is finished, we'll move it up to this point. I moved the machine over right to this point. This is gonna be my XY zero position. And now I need to set that in the open build software. Right now, this is where the actual home position is on the machine, but I want to set this to zero. I'll set this to zero, and that gives me now my work position. The only thing that's left is just to probe this. So we're gonna probe it now, and then we'll load the file, and we'll be ready to carve. To probe it, all I need to do is just select this button right here, brings up this window, confirm my position, and hit probe. And from there, you can see it going through the operation. So that probe now is done, Z height is set, and of course it gives me this little box to be able to check to make sure that everything is put away. So at this point, all we need to do is load the G-code file. VCAR projects, here's my Freddy Frog, and there is the G-code file right there. And remember, all three uh, cuts are on that one file. So we'll select it, open it, and that will load it in. And that way you can see everything right there. And that's exactly what I want. So let's go up here now and run the job. The nice thing about the way this was laid out, I have one bit that's gonna cut all of the operation. And that is really, really nice. And the reason being is I don't have to go through bit changes, resetting up the Z axis, None of that. It does the complete operation. Now, granted, could I have done it with multiple bits, drilling operations and all the different crazy stuff? Yes, it could. But this, to me, is so simple to be able to cut out the projects this way. And to have all the tool paths on one file just makes it so much easier. And I try to do this whenever possible. And of course, there are times when you can't do that and you're gonna have to save multiple files of G-code to be able to complete the project. But this uh, toy like this, where we're doing the cutout and doing these little decorative pockets, if you can set it up where you use one bit to do the entire operation, and let's face it, there's three different operations that we're doing here with one bit, then I say, why not? Make it simple, make it easy on yourself, to be able to uh, do this type of project. So this is actually almost finished now, and then we'll be ready to remove it from the CNC machine. 
Now it's on the last path. It's just now finishing up. It's cutting at the full depth. And now it's finished. And what does it do? It returns right back home, turns off the spindle, and we're ready to remove it and see what it looks like. Freddy Frog Buddy is all cut out now. So now we can actually lift this off. And you can see how well that the tape holds. And all that's left to do is to be able to cut these pieces. Oftentimes it's rather difficult to re release a piece, so a putty knife is definitely helpful. And that way it will easily come off. And you can see how nice that comes out. So a little bit of sanding and it'll be ready for paint. This is gonna be beautiful. And again, you can see just how nice that is. A little bit of sanding to clean up the edges and Freddy Frog Buddy will be ready to assemble. Get him all painted up, be nice. Now with the sander, it takes a very, very light touch to be able to just touch these edges up and make them very, very smooth and to be able to remove any little pieces of um, material that needs to go away. In a matter of just a couple of minutes, you can look at this edge and that is just beautiful. Perfect. So I'm gonna do that with all the different pieces and then put it into the spray booth and spray it all. But that looks really nice. I'm very, very pleased with how this turned out. And with the two edges sanded, this is actually perfectly smooth. So what I'll do is when I glue this up, after it's completely dry, I'll come back and sand it one more time. These edges will be absolutely perfect. Thank you for watching today, and I hope that you really enjoyed being able to see this SVG file on Freddy Frog Buddy, being able to be developed in the Easel Basic, in the Lightburn, and in the VCAR Pro. And don't forget, you can use the VCAR desktop just fine for this project. But this is absolutely a game changer. The ToyMakingPlans.com is an absolutely wonderful site to be able to pick out all the different toys and make them for the kids, grandkids, or whoever that you want to be able to make them for. Now, if you found this video useful, please give me the thumbs up and don't forget, hit that little subscribe button down there. It really does help. You know, it's one of the crazy things. I still have about 70% of the people that view the videos that never subscribe. I don't know why. I try to be able to give you a lot of great content that will help you in your shop. So by all means, if you haven't subscribed, by all means, please do so. It really does help me out. But for now, I hope I can encourage each and every one of you to, one, get into the shop and start making some Christmas gifts, and two, take a look at ToyMakingPlans.com. I think that you will find that their product is absolutely amazing. It's a game changer for me. It saves me from having to do all that design work. <laughs> I really don't want to do that. I would rather be in the shop making the different toys on the CNC machines and on the lasers rather than back there in the computer just designing. So hats off and thank you for the ToyMakingPlans.com. So for now, this is going to be the end of this particular video, but I look forward to seeing you real soon. So bye-bye now. Yeah, I really do paint them. I have a very... Simple makeshift paint boot setup, and I've got Freddy Frog Buddy being painted right there, and he's looking real good. The wheels are coming out nice. The other parts are already painted, so I'll be able to get this little rascal assembled very, very soon.